Namaste. Enlightenment can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor. It doesn't matter whether you are white or black or whether you belong to any upper caste or lower caste. Enlightenment has happened to men and women belonging to all levels of life. In this podcast, I am sharing a real life story of a hunter's daughter and she was illiterate and yet she became one of the greatest saint who she was, what was her name, you will find in this podcast. So let's begin. Boundaries can be defined, but her love, her devotion was without any boundaries. It was indefinite. The Ramayana, meaning Rama's journey, written 2500 years ago, around 500 BC, is one of the largest and oldest ancient epics of world literature. And it mentions a fascinating story that is worth remembering. Her name was Shabari. Shabari was born in a tribal community. Her father was a hunter. She grew up in the forests playing with birds, animals and soon became very fond of them. When she was 15, her father decided to arrange for her marriage. Hundreds of goats and roosters were brought at the marriage site. The forest folks were in a party mood. Everybody was waiting for the big day, for the big feast. It was a moment of celebration. Homes were decorated with garlands. The plates were filled with fruits and some men were busy sharpening their swords and knives. Shabri saw this and inquired. Her mother said, the men are sharpening their tools because tomorrow all these goats and roosters will be chopped. Little Shabri asked, but why? Her mother said, we have brought all of these animals to prepare a grand feast for your marriage day. And little Shabri was shocked. She could not imagine that all of these innocent animals were to be killed for her wedding feast. What kind of celebration was this? Her consciousness was not ready to accept this horrible slaughter of animals. It moved her heart and at that very moment she made a decision. A decision that was to change her life forever. A decision to renounce this material world. And that very night, Shabri secretly left her home, her family, her tribe, her community, never to come back again. She kept moving, crossing small villages and towns, surviving on wild berries and fruits, until she reached a monastery. Afraid to ask for help, she did not dare to enter the monastery, but stayed under a tree that was close to this monastery. Saint Matang, a renowned master, was living in this monastery. Every morning, Saint Matang walked along the road towards the river. The road was very bad. Shabri observed this. She secretly cleaned this road for him. The very first day she cleaned the road before his arrival. When Saint Matang arrived, he was surprised to see the cleaned road. It was unusual. He thought someone from the monastery must have cleaned the road for him. Next day, Shabri got up and cleaned the road again. Saint Matang wondered, who had cleaned the road again? Maybe few of his disciples, he thought. The next day, again the road was cleaned by Shabri. Now, 
the saint was really curious to know who was behind this noble work so when he returned back he called all of his disciples who lived in the monastery and inquired and everybody said we never cleaned the road but if you want we will do so saint matang smiled and said that is fine i don't want to see something done when i ask for it rather i appreciate things that are done out of love spontaneously and so next day saint matang arrived and the road looked neat so he looked around to see and he saw a little girl hiding behind a huge tree he went near the tree and said please come out i want to see you shivering with fear little shabri slowly came out and stood in front of saint matang saint matang observed the little girl he could see that the girl has been away from her home for many days and so he asked why are you here and shabri said i have left my home forever i can see that but why he asked and little shabri said they were planning to kill animals for my wedding feast so i thought if my marriage is going to be the reason for killing so many animals i will not marry and so i left everything and now here i am saint matang looked in her eyes he could see that the little girl was not a common soul not a common person else who would leave her home and family for preventing the killing of animals he could sense the height of her consciousness it had led this little girl to a saint who was a master of masters and whom the whole subcontinent admired and worshiped this is the power of consciousness when it comes the world calls you crazy but the master calls you wise there were hundreds of monks staying in saint matang's monastery but no one had bothered to clean the road on which the master walks but this little girl shabri had been cleaning it so that the master could walk with ease saint matang smiled he could see the depth of her feelings her dedication and her sense of selfless seva duty he took her in the monastery and shabri stayed in this monastery for many years serving the master selflessly through her selfless service and devotion shabri became an enlightened being an insightful soul when consciousness arrives no one can stop you there is no looking back one day saint matang decided to attain maha samadhi maha samadhi means the act of consciously and intentionally leaving one's body his disciples were shocked very soon they would not see their master in physical form a sense of sadness prevailed across the monastery his most devoted disciple shabri could not control her tears she started crying even that day after so many years she could remember that very first day when she had met this great master and now the master was to leave his body forever she started crying she could not control her feelings she asked him when would i be able to attain self realization and experience the abode of peace saint matang said for that you have to wait one day lord rama will visit this monastery and the moment you see him you feel his divine presence you will be able to attain it till then you have to wait and pray 
for his darshan with this last words the divine master saint matang left his body by attaining maha samadhi shabri remained in the monastery for many years she was now 62 years old all the other disciples had left but she remained waiting for the arrival of lord rama every day she would clean the road that went through her monastery who knows any time lord rama may arrive she thought and one fine day after a wait of 30 years that moment came when lord rama with his younger brother lakshmana arrived many spiritual yogis were waiting to welcome lord rama but instead of going to their place lord rama went to the monastery where shabri was living and waiting for him a wait of 30 long years what you seek is also seeking you for the lord always knows where the spring of love and true devotion is he knows who you really are what you really think what you really do and what you are really becoming when lord rama arrived at shabri's place shabri was overjoyed she became ecstatic and said there were so many exalted yogis waiting for your darshana but you came to this unworthy devotee this clearly shows that you will neither see whether your devotee lives in a palace or a humble hut whether he is erudite or ignorant nor will you see his caste or color you will see the true devotion i do not have anything to offer other than my heart but here are some berry fruits may it please you my lord saying so shabri offered the fruits that she had collected for lord rama when rama tasted them lakshmana raised concern that shabri had already tasted them and the fruits were therefore impure but lord rama said nothing could equal these berry fruits offered with such devotion whosoever offers a fruit a leaf a flower or some water with love i accept it with great joy pleased with shabri's devotion rama the lord blessed her with his vision and that was the moment for which this woman had spent her whole life can you imagine this is what is dedication patience and indefinite devotion to the almighty lord and that moment shabri experienced the ultimate bliss of self realization and she was liberated the story of ramayana read by millions and millions of hindus across the world is incomplete without the mention of shabri and her fascinating spiritual journey a tribal girl a daughter of a hunter poor uneducated yet shabri through her devotion and dedication reached the highest spiritual stage one could ever imagine a daughter of a hunter she became a historic epic figure in the holy scriptures of ramayana and in the hearts of millions of hindus who worship and read the ramayana in india the name shabri is used as a metaphor for an endless wait for god and his darshana shabri symbolizes devotion in fact shabri is a another name for devotion devotion is a love overflowing even when nobody is there it is overflowing to things to tables to chairs to walls it is just overflowing it is not a question of to whom 
when your heart is overflowing with devotion the pain that you have been feeling cannot be compared to the joy that's coming there is always a difference between giving up and turning things over to the lord no matter where you are who you are or what you are in the kingdom of god all are equally and warmly welcomed provided you have shabri that is devotion within you for knowledge without devotion to god produces hatred with all your heart you must trust the lord and not your own judgment always let him lead you and he will clear the road for you to follow that is the way the only way to live a blessed life always remember speculative knowledge alone without devotional service is not able to give liberation on the other hand even without knowledge one can obtain liberation if one engages in the lord's devotional service let there be more devotion more love in your life remember god loves you god is love and love is real meditate jai shri ganesha जय गुरु ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम